Later in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build those. <laughs> it's so scheiße! I built pinhole cameras out of beer cans and I hung them up around my house and let them take a long exposure for one year. And today's the day where we're gonna take them down and see what happened. Oh, but you should stay tuned because later in this video I'm gonna show you how you can build those beer can pinhole cameras yourself. We got one camera here and another one a little further this way. And one camera up there. You have to remember that these are pinhole cameras, but still cameras. So the shutter is still open. To close it, I will take a bit of tape and some scissors with me on the way to the roof. Clip one. Time for a short little break, because you can probably anticipate what's gonna happen next. Therefore, safety precautions first, please stay safe and please do not do this at home, at least not in the same way that I'm doing it. Soll ich ranzoomen? Ich nehme mich noch ein bisschen weiter vor. Ich will nicht! Es gibt noch einen Sinn, wirklich! we're back on safe ground it's finally time to open up our cameras and scan in the pictures and yes you heard right even though there is photosensitive paper in here you would usually use in a dark room there is no need for any chemical processes if you would put this piece of paper into a developer it would turn black immediately because of the long exposure time of one year and regarding fixing i have heard different opinions some people say that it is okay to fix this piece of paper while some other people say that it could destroy your image so best way to just handle it is open it up scan it one time and then store it away but one more thing to take into account this piece of paper is still sensitive to light so if you leave it out in an area where it will get hit by the light for a long time it will slowly fog and then turn all gray so to avoid this it's best to store it away in a rather light tight area after scanning and for that i will simply use one of those sleeves with two thicker cardboard pieces of paper in there so i can simply sandwich up the image in between put it in a binder and that's basically it because the scan is all we need so when scanning in the piece of paper this is what we're left with it's a rather abstract shape and all we know is that it's a long exposure and of course it's a negative. So first I'm gonna open it up in camera raw and turn the negative into a positive. 
to do so we are going to go to the curves panel here and invert this curve by dragging this point all the way here and this point all the way here and now i think it's a bit more clear what we're looking at here to show you a bit better first i'm gonna brighten up the picture a bit but here is where it might get a bit confusing since we inverted the curve all of the menu settings are also inverted so to brighten up the image instead of going this way we have to go this way into the direction to make it darker but I'm just gonna slightly increase the shadows a bit so we will get a better idea of what's going on in here. And now I think it's a good time to explain to you what we're looking at. This is a long exposure of the sun, so the lines we see in here are actually the sun trails. The Birken camera took a picture of the area for one whole year. So all of these stripes are basically the sun going up and going down within the course of one year. The stripes you see at the bottom here are when the sun was relatively low. So this is the winter time. And the stripes that you see up here, these are the days in summer. And what you can also see is that some of the lines are rather dotted and there is space in between the lines. And this means that during these times of the day, the sun was not visible. So for example, there were clouds in front of the sun. In this shot, I might have pointed the camera a little bit more upwards, so you can also see the whole curve. But I think, to be honest, this turned out quite all right. You can see the house in the background, you can still see some context variables, as for example, some trees and the roof where I put the camera on. And I think there's something we can do out of this. So basically what I'm doing here is seriously improvising. There's a lot of color in the picture, but we just have to bring it out. So what I'm gonna do now is just improvise and play around with the white balance, with the curves in all the three different color channels. Also play around with the saturation and the color tones in here, but also with the camera calibration and the tones of the camera in here. So let's see what we're gonna make out of this. Okay, I think that looks all right. My main goal was to bring out the house a bit more, to see the structures in the house and also bring some more colors into the curves. And now I'm just gonna save it as a preset and see if I can apply it to the other pictures as well. Got curious and want to try it yourself? Good, because now I'm going to show you what you need to build one of those cameras yourself. We are going to need some scissors, some tape, some sanding paper, a needle and some paper. For the purpose of showing you how the camera is built, this is normal paper, but to make it work, this has to be photosensitive paper. So everything I'm showing you right now has to either be done in the complete dark or in the dark room to make sure that this piece of paper is not exposed to any light before putting it into the camera. And self-evidently to build can cameras, we will need some cans. You can take whatever can you like, but I would recommend to take the slightly bigger ones and you will need a pair of two cans to build one camera because one will serve as a body and the other one will serve as a lid. But if you're in the same situation as me that you don't have any empty cans, but all you have are cans that are still full, well, I think you know what you have to do now. 
I feel like such a bad role model. Being on the roof, drinking in front of the camera, all in one video. What I have done so far is only to take off the top of the can with a can opener and I have cleaned and dried the cans properly. And now we're gonna take one of the cans to choose as the body for our camera and the other ones we can put on the side for now. So what we basically have to do to make a pinhole camera out of this is poke a hole into the can. But to make the hole as small as possible, we have to thin out the material of the can first. So what we are going to do now is to take a piece of sandpaper, sand the area down and then make a hole to just make sure that it's small and the material around is thin. I'm going to start off with some a bit rougher sanding paper and just choose a spot where I think the pinhole would be good. Once we have taken quite a lot down already, we can also choose a less grainy sandpaper and repeat the process. Just take your time when sanding this down because we have to be at a place where a lot of the material around here is gone, but it's not that thin that the can is gonna rip apart. And when we're at this point, we're good to make our pinhole. So I'm just gonna take a needle here. You can basically measure it out, but it's also okay to eyeball it. I will just try to poke a tiny, tiny little hole right in the middle of the can. And you don't have to put the needle all the way in, but just the tip of the needle is enough to make a good pinhole that can kind of handle a long exposure of a whole year. So here we are. We have our pinhole right here. And now we can take our piece of paper and put it inside the camera. So as you can see here, we're trying to put the paper in the way that the pinhole is not covered. And to make it stay in this place, we will just secure it with a tiny piece of tape. So like this, take a tiny piece of tape and just secure the paper in place. At this point, we are almost done with our pinhole camera. The only thing we still have to do is close this side of the can. And the easiest way to do so is take another can, cut it in half and put it on there as a lid. So that's what we're gonna do now. And just to secure light sneaking in, we will probably tape everything up here. What I also like to do to secure the can from moving and also from the weather, as for example heavy rain, because it can easily collect in here, is to build a small kind of cover on here. And I'm just gonna do this by using some tape. I mean, this doesn't look too pretty, but it does its job because now the rain cannot collect in here and this is very important to keep the camera steady for the duration of the long exposure. The only thing we still have to do is build a shutter, put something to cover up the sole. So I will just put a piece of tape over here and now the beer can camera is ready to see some light. Im Osten geht die Sonne auf, im Süden steigt sie hoch hinauf. Im Westen wird sie untergehen, im Norden ist sie nie zu sehen. Okay. So a good way to find a spot to put this camera up is to have a compass on the side. Because it's best if this camera is pointing towards the south. Since the sun is rising in the east and going down in the west, by pointing it to the south, we should have all the way from the sun going up and the sun going down all in one shot because of the field of view, since this is kind of a round circle, is almost, not entirely, but almost 180 degree. So when pointing the camera into the direction of the south, we should have the east and the west all in one shot. So the beginning and the end of the way of the sun. And that's basically all you have to know when building one of those cameras and hanging them up. And before I forget, one more thing you are going to need for this is time. This is not a short-term project, but this is something that works best if you calculate some time in. 
As you saw in my video, my exposures were done over the course of one year, but you can also choose a shorter time as for example half a year, three months or only a month. But then you have to keep in mind that the density and the amount of the sun trails will of course be way less. And that is something you should also consider when hanging up your camera to choose a spot where it's safe and okay to let it hang there for quite a long time. Private property of course it's best but I have seen people who had solutions where they put a note on there to explain what it is and just make sure that nobody thinks that it's an object of danger. Yep, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you tried this yourself or if you want to try this yourself, I would be very interested to see your results. So just hit me up in probably a year and tell me how your experiment went with the pinhole beer can camera long exposure. That said, I would say see you next time.